All right, hi, so we're going to take a look at how to use uh, Verilog, uh, another programming language that's used um, in the sort of circuit modeling uh, industry, how we can use it for uh, simulating uh, digital logic circuits, the sort of circuits that you would find inside of a microprocessor or microcontroller. So how to synthesize what you see in a microprocessor chip. Okay, so here we go. Um, I want to take a look at uh, modeling this circuit right here. Okay, it's a an adder, and uh, it has inputs and it has outputs, and it has two exclusive OR gates, one OR gate, and two AND gates in it. Now, uh, there's two ways that you can use Verilog that I recommend right now. One is to use uh, EDA Playground, and the other one would be to use the Remote Lab uh, setup. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to log into Remote Lab. I'm just going to type in the go all right so in remote lab you can access the uh, command line like this and we now have an ssh connection inside it's a text-based uh, connection and we can use that the other way to to use verilog would be through eda playground and with EDA Playground, uh, you, what you do is you write in here the model that you want to simulate. So uh, typically, these models begin with um, something like module, and in our case, this is lab I part 9, and we end with end module like that. Then there's going to be some declaration of... Um, uh, re registers and wires and, and the basic circuitry. And, uh, and then what we're going to do, so we're going to put in uh, registers, and then we're going to put in interconnects, and then we're going to put in uh, circuit elements like gates. Okay, we're going to put those in next. Okay, then uh, we're going to run our processes. Okay, so there's going to be process one and process two, and these are going to run in parallel. And uh, each process begins with an initial, like that. So one of the processes that we're going to run is going to be this one, which is a monitoring process that runs basically every cycle, and is going to spit out the values of our variables A, B, whoops, A, B, C, D, uh, Z, C out, as well as the value of time. So there's going to be cycles of time as the model sort of works. That'll happen in one of the uh, processes. And then the other one is actually going to run the tests on our circuit. Okay, that'll be process two. We'll get to that in a second. All right, so we want to set up a bunch of registers. And um, these registers are going to contain data and information. And so in this case, what I've got is... Uh, a register with that goes from bit zero to bit zero. So a one bit register called A and B. Then we have a uh, another one bit register called C. Then we have a bunch of integers that I would want to use for um, loops and for holding uh, test values that will be examined to compare um, the, the, the circuit that I'm simulating against a sort of a gold standard. OK, um, and then we have uh, two other registers that contain outputs uh, for Z and C out. So those are the outputs of my circuit. OK, Z and C out right there. All right, so I've got that. Now I need to declare interconnections. What are the interconnections? Well, the interconnections are the wires that occur between individual logic elements in here. So the they're the wires on the sort of on the inside that connect, say that XOR gate to that uh, XOR gate right there. And so there's a list of them, and they're called wires. And I'm just going to place them in like that. All right. After that, I have my adder circuit. So I'm going to put in all of the different things that need to be connected in. So we've got. Um, one XOR gate there. We've got another XOR gate there. So these are like declaring uh, like a, a variable type in C or one of those other languages. 
in this case the variable variable type or the the object type is an XOR or an AND or an XOR or an AND or an OR and I declare them in terms of their output as the first parameter or first argument and uh, and then the the uh, input lines that go into that particular gate so in the case of an XOR I've got uh, two inputs A and B and one output like that all right and so these have names associating with the registers and uh, the um, the interconnects or the wires that have been listed up above all right so next up we have uh, process one that's the monitoring that'll display things to the to the screen that'll be on the bottom of my screen and then afterwards what I'm going to do is I am going to so this monitor this will always run now I need an, a begin here and an end there and then I have a bunch of for loops that begin like that and those for loops also end Okay, like that. All right. And then I've got the contents that go right in the middle right there. Okay. And that will be me setting up the changing of values into registers A, B, and C are inputs based on the I, J, and K, I, J, and K uh, increments that are coming in from the for loops. So there's three variables that I'm running through and all the permutations of those, uh, the, you know, sort of those three. Okay, one after, that's why I have three loops, one inside of the other. And then every time I get to the center loop, I update my A, B, and C based on the values of the counters in those three for loops. Then what I do is I have the gold standard equations that describe the output for Z and C out. And so I expect, I put the value that's supposed to come out for the combinations of A, B, and C into the variable expect one. And this is a combination of, in this case, there's an and here there's an or there there is an and there and an exclusive or there and those are all based on the pathway for um for let me see this is z right here this is for uh c out right there there's c out and then there's the equation for z and here you can see there's two exclusive ors Z comes in from this exclusive or and that exclusive or the combination of C, A, and B like that, and so that's uh, that's that component right. There. And so that's the uh, an equation, two pairs, or that's a pair of equations that describe how those variables are supposed to come together. It's the test conditions, okay? And then what I do is I compare the test conditions that are stated here, and there's and it's important to point out that there are delays in here a delay of one and delay of two and another delay of two in order to make sure that there's a, a del, um, sufficient time to allow propagation through the gates all the way to the output okay so we're going to compare these values that are being set against what happens when it runs through the simulated circuit which are defined over here so that is what's being tested and this is the test Okay, and that test requires conditional statements. Because what's going to happen is we're going to ask if the, 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 um, the gold standard re is the same as the value that ran through the circuit. There's your C out right there. Okay, then we can say that the test passed. Otherwise, it failed. And we'll say, we'll print out under what condition C failed. Then there's a, 
a comparison of the Z output with the expected Z output. And then if it matches, then we get a pass. And if it fails, we get a fail like that. Okay, so I've now got all of that written up. I'm going to say that this is lab I, oops, lab I, part nine, demo. I'm going to save it. Oops, tells me I need a valid tool or simulator. That's right. EDA Playground allows you to, um, to choose different types of HDL simulators. Okay, hardware description language simulators. So here we're going to be using the system Verilog, uh, Verilog sort of test bench and design uh, method. We are going to then choose here, Icarus Verilog 0.9.7. The compile options are there. The run options can be placed there. We don't need to touch that. That's pretty good. Later on, we might want to change the run options if we if we really need to. That should be sufficient. I'm now going to hit save again. It's saved. And and do do make sure that before you do that, that you actually have set up a profile and that you've logged in. Okay, that's that's important. All right. So now we're set up. I go run. Cross my fingers. And what we can see is that it ran a test there. The test passed for both C and Z for the combination of A is equal to zero, B is equal to zero, C is equal to zero. It gives a zero for Z and a zero for C out, and it passed. Um, we do a bunch of other tests, again, different combinations. We'll take a look at this one right here. This one is for A is equal to one, B is equal to one, C is equal to zero. Z is supposed to be equal to zero and C out is equal to one. It passes for the condition for C, A is equal to 1, B is equal to 1, C is equal to 0, Z is equal to 0, C out is equal to 1. So we see that in this case, for the C out, I should have written C out there, um, it worked. So we see for all the possible combinations of A, B, and C, Z and C out match both in terms of the simulated circuit and the logical test conditions that I use to test against my simulated circuit. And there you go. That's how we set this up in EDA Playground. Now, if I wanted to do the same sort of test in uh, iVerilog on Remote Lab, what I could do is access Remote Lab uh, remotely using, um, say, an editor like bbedit that can access files over SSH, like I've done right here. Okay, or uh, I can type directly in, uh, let's see, with nano and lab i, like that. Okay, and so you can edit directly in an SSH session, like that. And then when you're done, you go i verilog, like that, and you say uh, lab i, like this. And what we see is that there's an a.out file that's been outputted. We then go vvp a dot out like that and it runs the test on the um, on the remote lab system so just like on eda playground it's just it requires a command line interface all right good luck everyone take care mm -hmm.